This video will look at the new mu0 algorithm from DeepMind in the series going from AlphaGo to AlphaGo0 to Alpha0 and now mu0. Mu0 is the latest series in making these algorithms more general and applicable to more reinforcement learning problems. Whereas Alpha0 showed that uh, the AlphaGo0 algorithm could be applied to chess and shogi as well as Go, Mu0 is going to apply this algorithm to the Atari games. The Atari games are things like Pac-Man and uh, Brick Breaker, these really visually complex uh, domains. Mu0 is going to do this by introducing a new way of working with when you don't have a perfect environment dynamics model. So in the case of chess and uh, Go, you have this, you know exactly what the next state is going to be from a current state action pair. So Mu0 is going to have to devise this way to do planning, this look ahead tree based search without having a perfect environment model. And it's going to do this by parameterizing the uh, dynamics model similar to model based reinforcement learning. But mu0 is different from most model based reinforcement learning algorithms because it's not going to try to perfectly reconstruct the state. Rather, it's just going to try to predict what it needs to facilitate this Monte Carlo tree search with self play, the same kind of idea as AlphaGo0. So it's a really interesting paper that follows in line of AlphaGo to mu0. And it's really interesting to follow this pro uh, progression of papers from DeepMind. This video will explain the mu0 algorithm. This is a part of a series going from the sensational AlphaGo paper that showed how you could use deep neural networks to play the game of Go, and then AlphaGo 0 that built upon the self-play algorithm in AlphaGo, improving the way that you use Monte Carlo tree search to improve the policy network, as well as other modifications like incorporating a residual neural network and putting the value and policy networks into a single shared neural network. Then came Alpha 0. Alpha 0 was a big step from AlphaGo 0 because it generalized the algorithm into chess and shogi as well, showing that this kind of a framework could be more general and applied to more games other than Go. Mu0 extends this dramatically. It's showing that this algorithm can be used on the Atari suite, which is these very uh, visually complex games, things like Brick Breaker, these kinds of Atari games. So the Mu0 algorithm is generalizing the uh, planning, the learning with the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm, these kinds of ideas in the AlphaGo series by not having an original perfect dynamics model. So a perfect dynamics model means that it, given the current state in action, you know exactly what the next state is gonna be and you use this to do these kinds of tree searches. So when you have the current uh, chessboard, you know that if you move your pawn to, you, you know exactly what the next state is gonna be after taking that action. So mu0 is gonna generalize this kind of a tree search, uh, this value and policy networks, the self-play, all the different ideas from AlphaGo up to Alpha0, but it's gonna generalize this to the case where you don't start with the perfect dynamics model. Mu0 is gonna use a form of model-based reinforcement learning. Model-based reinforcement learning describes the paradigm where you're learning the dynamics model that models this transition from state action pairs into the next state, or the SA to S prime kind of mapping in the Markov decision process framework. So the idea here is that the key idea, the key difference between the way that Mu0 does model-based reinforcement learning and a lot of these other papers do it, like things like uh, visual world models from David Ha and Schmidhuber, is that they're not going to reconstruct the uh, state space into the complete pixel space. So they're not going to have the mapping from S to S prime be this 96 by 96 uh, RGB frame of the Atari game. Rather, what they're doing is they're taking the original observation, which is going to be a stack of 32 of the last 96 by 96 red, green, blue uh, frames in the Atari games, but they're also going to do the same kind of original state encoding that they've been using in Go, Chess, and Shogi in Alpha Zero. But so they're going to take this original input state and they're going to map it to a low dimensional representation by using the first neural network in the Mu0 pipeline, the H neural network. So the H neural network takes in the original observation and it maps it into this low dimensional root state that you start the planning with. So then what they're going to do is they still have the same policy and value network, but now it's taking in as input this hidden state from the, uh, the original encoding function from the board game state, and then the hidden state that's going to be mapped to with the dynamics function. So what the dynamics function does, the third neural network in this, is it takes in the state in action and it maps it to a reward and a next state. So this overview shows how you use the Monte Carlo tree search with this. The Monte Carlo tree search takes from a given policy uh, it'll produce this new distribution of actions by doing this kind of a look ahead search and then you would use this to select the action because it's going to find a better action than just the original policy would predict. And then we're going to get into how you actually train and update this kind of a system that's got the representation function, the policy and value networks, and the dynamics function. This diagram of the equations used in mu0 is a great overview of how the algorithm works. So the first is the model. You start off with this root state that you begin the tree based planning search with. So you have this S0, which is a result of the mapping function H0, the representation from the previous stack of observations. So in the case of Atari, 
you have these 96 by 96 RGB frames that like make up each instance of the game. So what you do is you stack them together by just concatenating them along the feature axis, the last 32 frames, and then the H function will map this into a low dimensional representation that starts off the tree-based planning search. So then what you do is you have this dynamics function that maps from the hidden states and an action into a reward and a state. So having this kind of an intermediate output of the reward with the dynamics function, it gives you another way of kind of structuring the training of this. So you're predicting the intermediate reward with the dynamics function as well as the transition to the next state when you're going from state to state in the tree-based search. So then you have the same algorithm from AlphaGo0, zero, AlphaGo0, zero, is you have this one neural network, this residual neural network in this case with 16 residual blocks that takes in the input hidden state and predicts this policy, which is a distribution over actions to take. So say you wanna move your uh, pawn two spaces forward or you know, move the knight something, this kind of, this kind of a distribution of actions is with the idea of the policy. It's coming up with different things to do. In Brick Breaker, it might be like move the joystick left or right or just stay this in place. Then you have the value uh, estimate that comes out of this neural network as well. The value estimate is predicting uh, you know, the future reward from this state. So these are the three neural networks. You have the uh, representation function that takes in the raw input state, uh, maps it into this low dimensional hidden state, then you have the dynamics function that is helping you do this tree-based search, as well as the policy and value networks that also help you do this tree-based search. So you search by using the Monte Carlo tree search. They do this uh, mu sub theta, which is just you know denoting the concatenation of all these different uh, neural network models. Then you get the action distribution from the Monte Carlo tree search. So the way that you update the neural network is that you have these different losses based on the intermediate reward prediction from the dynamics model, the uh, value estimate from the uh, F sub theta here, and then you have the difference between the Monte Carlo tree search action distribution and the policy from the uh, policy output from the neural network. Before we get into the details of the Mu0 paper, we'll look at this slide quickly to just reiterate the main ideas of the algorithm. So you initialize the Monte Carlo tree search by taking the raw game image of the stack of the history of frames and encoding this into a hidden state by using the representation function h. Then you have this dynamics model, which is a recurrent model that we're going to need to train by using backpropagation through time to construct new hidden states by mapping from previous hidden states and proposed actions. So the model is going to navigate the Monte Carlo tree search by predicting the policy, value, and immediate reward doing the same similar thing that they do in AlphaGo and AlphaGo0, where you have this uh, distribution over actions produced by the policy, then you have the value estimate of each of the states with the value network. And you're gonna use this in order to do that kind of a max action selection as you're traversing a Monte Carlo tree search. So then the model is gonna be trained to correctly predict the value and rewards and align the policy with the improved policy from the Monte Carlo tree search. So similar to AlphaGo0, you're gonna have the uh, quick policy that is just the prediction from a given state, to map the policy distribution or the action distribution that's found by doing the look ahead Monte Carlo tree search. So one interesting thing about this is that compared to a lot of model-based reinforcement learning algorithms that try to exactly reconstruct the pixel space, there's no constraint for the hidden state here to capture all the information necessary to reconstruct the original observation. So it's this really abstract space that's used for planning, a pretty interesting idea compared to a lot of the previous model-based reinforcement learning algorithms for visually complex domains like Atari. Because the dynamics model in mu0 is a recurrent process, we have to train it by using backpropagation through time. So backpropagation through time is best explained by first looking at a simple recurrent neural network. So say this is a machine translation problem where you have this as an English sentence and you have this x1, x2, x3, which is like token by token in the English sentence that you wanna translate into say something like German. So you would start off with a random initial state for the recurrent neural network then you take in the input, which changes the internal hidden state, and then also produces some output. And you proceed like this as you uh, input, get new inputs, and then you update the hidden state while also producing some output. So this will help us get a sense of how the uh, dynamics model is transitioning us from state to state to state. And we're getting as input the actions from the uh, Monte Carlo tree search. And then we're having these outputs, which are our value estimates or different things like this, that we're using to update our... Uh, our algorithms in the mu0 planning system. So the backpropagation through time is this idea that when you get to y3, this output, what produced it? What can you take the partial derivatives of with respect to the loss function to do this kind of a gradient descent update? So you see that y3 or y3 prime, the predicted value here, is the uh, weight matrix that takes in the x and the hidden state and then you know produces the output y3. So that's a function of a2 and x3. Well, a2 is a function of the weight matrix that changes the hidden state from these inputs A1 and X2. And then A1 is you know, the same idea of this 
hidden state update weight matrix from the A0 and the X1, and then A0 is initialized in some way, in this case, to make it relatable to mu0, let's say that there is an H of an original observation. So putting this all together, you have this way of making up the final output Y3 prime, which you have to use for the partial derivatives when you're doing gradient descent to you know, update the weight matrices uh, Wy and Wh, and maybe this H function as well. So this is the way that mu0 is updated by doing this joint optimization through backpropagation through time. So what you do is you have the mu0 do the self-play and you collect this experience that you store in a replay buffer. So then you sample a given state from the replay buffer and then you do this kind of a mapping into the uh, S prime with the H function and then you have this trajectory of actions and you have the reward that resulted from the sequence. So this is the idea of why you have to use backpropagation through time. So what we want to do is we want to align the policies action distribution prediction with the action distribution found by Monte Carlo tree search. So this, is, this really should say uh, pi 1 and pi 5 rather than A1 and A5. So what you do is you have the A2 that comes out of the policy network. So the policy network takes in a state and it maps an action distribution. So say P of the S1 prime hidden state gives you this action A2 or this distribution over actions that you use to compare with the Monte Carlo tree searches distribution over actions. Well, S1 prime is constructed by the dynamics models S0 and A1. And S0 is a result of the representation functions mapping from the original observation. So you see how, say, if we had, uh, if we were criticizing it at A3, we'd have P of S2 prime, and this would go to P of the dynamics functions mapping from S1 prime and A2. Then we'd have to, you know, break this down again, similarly to what we did with the backpropagation through time with the recurrent neural network. It would end up looking something like this, this chain of these functions that make up the outputs at later time steps. Mu0 is trained by joint optimization of the loss between the value network's prediction of the value estimate of the reward from that state, the immediate reward from the dynamics model, and the policy distribution difference between the policy network and then the policy distribution found by Monte Carlo Tree Search. We've seen how backpropagation through time means that even this neural network H that maps from the original input state to S uh, prime, the original root state for the Monte Carlo Tree Search, this contributes to the overall joint loss function and is updated as a result of even if, say, the dynamics model makes a mistake with the uh, R1 prime, the H is a part of the partial derivative that made up this prediction or made up this output for everything that is involved in this uh, loss function. Just to reiterate this and try to make it more clear, a quick example of how backpropagation through time, or abbreviated as BPTT, comes into this is we want our neural network to match the Monte Carlo uh, tree search policy distribution, the pi of S2. So our neural network policy at S2 is a function of the hidden state, say uh, S2 prime, or maybe it should be A3, but so our policy is a function of this hidden state. And we want to have our policy approximately equal to the policy found or the action distribution found by the Monte Carlo tree search. So backpropagation through time comes into this because there's this chain of events that leads to the prediction of A2. So how do we get to S2 prime? The input to the policy network is we have the dynamics model from the hidden state S1 prime and the previous action A1. And then to get to S1 prime, we have to use our representation function of the original observation. So we have this chain of events that leads to the uh, later outputs that we use to do the partial derivatives and update all the parameters of the neural networks involved in this process. This table shows the results of mu0 on different games like chess, shogi go, and the different Atari games like Pac-Man. This table also shows the results of mu0 compared to previous algorithms, previous uh, model-based algorithms and model-free algorithms on the tasks of the Atari games and showing how these different modifications lead to better improvement. So another interesting extension is mu0 reanalyze. I'm not completely sure I understand how this works, but I think what they do is they have their replay buffer where they have these trajectories, and what they do is I think that they use the updated policies of the networks to produce these new Monte Carlo tree searches, and then they update the parameters by uh, matching the Monte Carlo tree search distribution from the previous actions. So it's a way of learning more with less data and being more data efficient, but I'm not completely sure that this is exactly how they do this. Thanks for watching this explanation of mu0. Mu0 makes the alpha zero algorithm more general by generalizing it to environments where you don't start off with a perfect dynamics model or a perfect simulator, knowing the exact transitions from state action pairs to the next state. Mu0 does this by introducing a dynamics function and a representation function H. I hope that from this explanation, you were able to get a sense of how this is actually trained by using backpropagation through time. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.